All right. So the uh, basics. They'll ask us some questions here about nulls and whatnot. Uh, you'll see when we get the stack crunch, it's a lot simpler than uh, the actual software itself because they make us type everything in. You'll see what I mean here in a little while. All right, so the claim. The majority of adults will erase all of their personal information online if they could. Now, you've got three choices, and one of them you can eliminate right away. You can eliminate sigma. Remember I told you. So it's either going to be a mean or a proportion. So what are we talking about here when we say a majority of adults? Proportion. So what? It's a P, so we say P. Now, how do we indicate much a majority? What what does that mean? Greater than, Greater than what? That's correct. Fifty um, percent. That's right. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Most people just get hung up on it. See what 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 would be a minority? Less than fifty percent. <laughs> See how we put a claim in words into into symbols. Mathematical symbol. Okay, so that's the claim. All right. Now they want us to fill out for the null and the. So, is there equality there? No. So that can't go in the null. It has to go into the alternative. Okay. Because the now see they're going to give you it's always P. They're going to give you all these alternatives for the null. Guess what? The only one that you can use is the equal. All all the, never changes. And then this is this is the claim uh, number. That's that's what we call p p naught because it goes it goes with the claim. Okay, it's like the, it's like the it's like the stated number because you see this is the p this is the p half. This is the this is the uh, this is the actual uh, number from the sample. So that's p half. And we're trying we're trying to see if that is that going to be close enough to uh, p. So, so we know it's greater than it's a one tail, it's a right tail test. See, that's where the claim goes. This claim has to go in the alternative. It's that simple. Just remember, the null always is equal. Now, in the wording, it may be at least or at most, those are greater than or equal, less than or equal, but you always change them to equal. Okay. Always. I don't know if they'll try to trick us or not. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now they're going to go. We're going to go to the next one. Will be a mu because C says the mean. Okay. So now I know right away when I open the first box, I just go to mu because that's the mean. And it says the mean pulse rates is equal to 68.9. So that that's is equal. It's it's plain English equal to 68.9. Okay. So I have equals in the claim. So the equals goes. This claim goes into the null because I have equal. That's what it means on here that the claim, original claim, contains equal. Okay. So we write mu equals 68.9. Now, what is the complement of equal? Nine. Not equal. So it's a two tailed test. If we can get significantly higher or lower than that, then we would reject the null. All right, so let me show you what it so looks like if we do this. On, on the last one, you put the equals as on the eighth one, the equals to, the equal to blah, blah, blah. As, uh, all right, you put portion A. And H1 instead of uh, H0. Why did you switch it off? This is the claim. Correct. The claim is whatever the claim is. The claim here was it's equal. The claim in the previous one was greater. the majority, which okay. means greater than. Okay, so, then that so the works. greater than doesn't have equal, so it has to go down in the H1. Yeah. You, the claim can go in any either place. Okay. Right? So let me show you what it looks like in stat crunch. If we were going to set it up, what do we got? 
couple of minutes to do that. So what I would do, if I can do it, uh, stat, since, since, it's a, 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 since it's a mean, it's a t-stat. And there's no mention of, a, of, a, of sigma, so it's a t-stat, one sample with summary. So the sample mean is 67.8, sample standard deviation is 11.5, and it's 170 adults. That's the summary. Now before we did confidence interval. Now there's no mention of alpha. So I have no idea what alpha would be, so the assumption would be if you were going to do a confidence interval, 95%. But here, watch, see, this is really nice. See, because there's all, you can't change the equals here. You can't change it. But when you put in mu naught, mu naught is 68.9, because that's part of the claim. It automatically shows up below. You don't have to retype it. All you have to do here is choose one of the three alternatives. You choose one of these three. Okay. See how nice it is? It's nice. And, and we know that this is not equal. It's already queued up for that. So and I would compute, and I would find, they would give me the p-stat, calculating the p-stat, uh, the formula is on the back, I'll show you how to do some of that as we go. The p-value, it calculates the p-value, if you put this on the t, uh, the t distribution and you drew the, the area in the tail to the left of this number, that's the p-value. And it's greater than alpha, any alpha we would think, you know. Even if you pick a 90% confidence interval, that would be 10% alpha. That's certainly 21 greater than 10. So we wouldn't reject at all. In other words, this this is close enough to the claim that we can't reject at all. We don't have sufficient evidence to reject at all. That's what we would say. So if you follow along, we just quit. We might as well do that. Does the original claim contain equality? Yes. So I go to, so do you reject, um, do you reject H naught? No. So the, the, the decision of the final conclusion would be the, the bottom box. There is not sufficient evidence to warrant rejection of the claim that the mean uh, pulse rate is 68.5. That's how we would answer that. So I'm trying to fill in some of the details here for you. Um, okay. So next one. That was seven. The number eleven. All right. So this is a hypothetical one. We're not. We're not going to be calculating anything. They're going to just ask us to use our our, our noggins and. If anything, you can use the rule of thumb. So it says, use only the rare rule of that, make subjective estimates to whether or not it's likely. For example, if the coin favors heads and the sample results in 11 heads, is there sufficient evidence to support the claim that heads are favored? No. 11 is too close to, we're expecting 10, so 11 is kind of close. So here, the claim is the mean age of students in a large statistics class is less than 30. A simple random sample of students has a mean age of 20.4. So does, does that corroborate the claim or not? So, see, the sample is unusual if the claim is true. You know, the claim says it's less than 30. So the sample is not unusual. The sample is unusual if the claim is false. Therefore, there's sufficient evidence to support the claim. Okay. The other one that says it's not unusual says there's not sufficient evidence, but there is. Yeah. That's sufficient evidence to support the claim of less than 30. So B would be the best choice. Okay? Yeah. All right. So that's that's where we're headed with this. They're just giving us some ammo to work with, so to speak. Fewer than 92% of adults have a cell phone. In a reputable poll of 1,129 adults, 84% said that they have a cell phone. Find the test statistic. So they want us to. 
So this is a this is a, a, a proportion. So it's the first one. It's a z stat, and it's calculated. The numerator is p hat minus p, and the and the denominator is a square root of p q over n. So we have all those numbers. And we but let's let the, let's let the let's let the computer do it, and then I'll show you how we could do it by hand. Just so it says find the test statistics. So this is how we would normally do it. We do stat proportion stat one sample with summary number of successes. Okay, so that's 0 0.84. Rather rather than rather than me do it, I'm going to let them do it. It's 84 percent of 11.29, and and 11.29 is the number of observations. And P is 0.92. That's the point, 0.92. And it's fewer than, so it's a left tail test. Less. The claim is in the alternative. It says fewer than 92%. So there's the claim. See, they use A instead of 1. It doesn't, it doesn't change. You see how I did that? This is the null. Uh, mu, uh, P naught. We call it P naught. It's the, it's what it's if all things if, if we don't reject it then that's 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 the best component. Well, that's that's what we say. either don't reject it or whatever. And this this is less than because it tests fewer. That too fast. We good. Okay, so that's it. So the test statistic is right there. Z stat. We call it Z-test, but they call it Z-stat. So just to reiterate, the sample proportion and the total, I plugged them in and they gave me right back to us. See, they put it out as, as, a, as a decimal thing. In, in reality, we would have put in 948 or 949. Because it's a people, yeah. But since, since it gave us a percent and a total, we just let it deal with it. It could ground it off or not the way it wanted. So there's the p value. The p value is really small. And this is, this is on the z on the z axis. Remember, 99.7 percent of the data is within three standard deviations of the mean. We're almost 10 standard deviations to the left. We're way in the left tail. So it's significant. By all, by all reckoning. So let's make sure as uh, two decimal places. The number they want from us is minus 9.91. Where do we get that number if we didn't have the computer? We would we would calculate it. It'd be uh, p hat, which is 82 84 percent, minus p. P is 0.92. That's that's the claim. And I would divide by uh, this is the square root of yeah square root of p q over n. So second square root p Q, P is 0.92. That means Q has to be what? Uh, 0.08. And I divide by 11.29. Parentheses. And there's your minus 9.91. It's the exact same number that they got. 9, 9, 9, 9.90827. That's where it came from. So you don't have to do it, but you should know where it came from, what it, what it means. So just to reiterate what we, what we, what we did here, we found our, our Z test, wrong side, huh? <laughs> Our Z test is minus 9.91. They don't give us an alpha level, but let's just use uh, let's use five percent. So you remember how to do that? You remember what the number is for five percent in one tail? 90% 90. 90 in the middle, so the Z for 90% is 1.645. Oh, I mean, yeah, so we, the way to remember that is you go to normal, I'll use between 
and we'll put 90%. The reason it's 90 is because it's got to be symmetrical. All, all, uh, all uh, uh, confidence interval t. There's your minus, plus or minus 1.645. So our z, our z is right here. This is our z critical, our z alpha is minus 1.645, and it's it's z alpha because it's a one-tailed test. Remember? Wasn't it? Yeah, it's a left tail test. So we put we put all the five percent in one tail. See, this is less than 0 0.001, and from here to here is 0 0.05. So t is much less than alpha. This is alpha, and this is t. Because t is what's to the left of the, the test statistic, alpha is what's to the left of the critical number. So once again, in the old days, we would just see where this was. If it's in the tail to the left of the critical on a left tail test, then, then we, we reject the null. If it's to the right, then we don't. Or in the modern one is figure out what the p-value is and compare it to the alpha. It's the same thing. It's just comparing two different aspects of the same thing as far as I'm concerned. Does that help? Trying to tie it together. One last thing. What if I would have gone here and instead of doing a hypothesis test, I did a confidence test? No, the thing of it is, it is 0.92 in the confidence interval. No. So we would we that would be that's see that would be using a confidence interval to reject. Okay. Good. See the, the 95, and even if and somebody says, well, I want a 99% confidence interval, it doesn't matter. We're so far in the tail, it doesn't matter. So that's a, you can't change the, the, the level of alpha after you test. You have to do it, you can't change it. Say, oh, I, I, I meant to do it, I want a bigger interval. You know? It wouldn't matter. See, it wouldn't matter. You could tell somebody, okay, well, go ahead. Make it 99%. Go ahead. It won't matter because 0.92 is still not in there. See, that's how confidence intervals are related to hypothesis testing. A lot of people uh, like confidence intervals even better. The, one of the problems is, though, when you're dealing with uh, proportions, the confidence intervals sometimes don't always work. For means, they always work. They'll always work for a mean, but for proportions, sometimes they don't. This one was so extreme that it didn't matter. All right, I beat that one to death, didn't I? <laughs> All right, let's try 50. I think it's a mean, yeah. Okay, so this one's a mean. The mean pulse rate in beats per minute, now that of adults is 69. They want, they want us to find the test statistic. So this is a T, because there's no mention of sigma. This is this is S because it's the mean pulse rate for the sample. I'm sorry, this is S. That's X bar, that's S. Because there's no mention of sigma. So we can't we can't use the Z. In this case, remember there's always two possibilities for for the mean. One is when you know sigma and one is when you don't. So we have to use the student T instead of the normal, the normal Z. So I would do stat, T stat, one sample with summary. See, now instead of using confidence interval, we're going to use hypothesis test. So the sample mean is 69.4. 11.4 is the S, and the sample size is 171. And so the mu naught is the 69. That's the claim. The claim is that it's equal, so we're already, we're already set up because it's a two tail test. Because if the claim is that it's equal, well, then the counter, the counter is that it's not equal. Okay, so I do a compute. Look at a p-value. There's no way we're rejecting this. You see that? Oh, it's almost on the opposite side of the z, the, the p stat. Anyway, 0.64 is the answer. No, I'm sorry, 0 0.46. 0.46 right. is the test of the system. Right? Uh, shucks. Too fast. Let's let me do it one more time. Oh, I went too fast. I 
got to put new numbers in. We'll see what happens with new numbers. 67.9, 11 11.4, 129. Okay. And it's still the same. The claim is still the same. Okay. All right. So this one is minus 1.1. 1. 1.1. Minus 1.1. All right. So what I wanted to do was to calculate this one. So now to calculate this one, the, the T test statistic, it says that we need to do X bar minus mu. Okay, so X bar is 67.9. Mu is mu naught. It's the claim, 69 divided by S, which is 11.4, divided by the square root of N, which is 1.9. So there's your minus 1.1. So it's the same number as we got from the computer. Right? So all they're doing is taking this, because these formulas are, are included, and they do everything for you. But that's where they come from. Now, the uh, you remember how to find the t values if you needed them. Remember that. What is the most important thing for a t value that we need? Improving numbers. If I go to calculator t, what's the first thing we got to do? Degrees of freedom. What's the degrees of freedom for the? If n is 129, 128. And so the uh, if, if we wanted to form this is a two-tailed test, right? Yes, yeah, so if we wanted to do a 95%, let's say 95%, I would do a between. Now remember, I'm, I'm getting the, the probability for a between. The tail's zero or what? So we've got 2.5% in each tail, so there's 95% red. But these are the demarcations. These are your critical values. So if, T, if the T stat is between those, then you don't check, and that's exactly what happens. We're between them. That's why the P value is so large. The P value was 0.2752. Now, now notice that if I take and put 1.10, I got to do it symmetrically because remember, uh, confidence intervals are always two sided. And you see, if I subtract that from, if I subtract that from one, I get 0.27, I believe it's 274. That's the complement of that. You add them up and get one. Because oh, okay. that's the amount in two tails because it's a two tail test. So for a p-value for a two-tailed test, I always have to do both tails. Okay. Because if we split up the alpha into two parts, we've got to split the t up. All right. So I just want to remind you of that, show you how it all works, fits together. Some of this you'll be able to use, and some you'll just discard. Uh, all right. A test statistic of Z equals minus 2.6 is obtained when testing the claim that P equals 3 fifths. Use the significance level alpha equals 0 0.05 and find the critical values. Okay, so it's a two-tailed test. So it's one point, it's plus or minus 1.96, because I've got to split that up into two, two tails. Because the claim is equal. So the counterclaim or the alternative is not equals, which goes into the alternative hypothesis. So it's two tails. That's too fast. Where did I get plus or minus 1.96? That's one of those special numbers that we remember. Well, I'm 95%. So if my test statistic is between those, I don't reject. But if it's less than the negative or greater than the positive, then I would, I would reject. So minus 2.6 is not inside there. It's on the right, right tail. So we're going to reject. So it's either A or B. Left tail. No, it's two tails. Okay, now left tail. I didn't see the negative. You're right. My bad. To the left tail. So we're going to either see the A or B because we're going to reject. Now how do we reward it? If you get if you get lost, then just go to here. Is is 
Does the original, original claim contain equality? Yes. Do we reject? Yes. There is sufficient evidence to warrant rejection of the claim. So there's sufficient evidence to warrant rejection of the claim. So it's D. See, if you get lost, there's a, there's a lot of stuff to help you out. But if you just read it, it makes sense. There's sufficient evidence. If the claim is three fifths and we're and we're out, we're in the tail, then we can't accept the claim. We can't accept the null. We have to reject it. So if we're rejecting it, then we have to reject the claim. Make sense? Okay. Uh, next is uh, 24. Or was that 24 I just did? I just did 24. Yeah. Okay, so 25. Assume a level of significance alpha is 0 0.05 and use the information. Okay. Original claim, more than 51% of adults would erase all of their personal information online if they could. A hypothesis test results in a p-value of 0.2137. So do not reject. This is much larger than that. So do not reject. So it's either B or C. Because the p-value is what, greater or less? Because it's greater. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, without using technical terms, state the final conclusion. So if you get lost, once again, you go like this. Uh, the original claim is greater than, so it's a right tail test with one tail. So the original claim does not contain equality. So you drop down and do you reject? And the answer is no. So it's the last one. So there is not sufficient evidence to support the claim. So it's either it's either uh, yeah it's B. There's not sufficient evidence to support the claim. So if you get lost because there's a lot of these words and you go, oh yeah, yeah. this is your gut roadmap right here. I mean I speak English and I I speak English and I get lost. I'm pretty sure. I don't know how, but that first guess is right. Number 29. Okay, I got to talk to you about type type one and type two errors. There's uh two things that could be true. Well, let's see. How can I do this? The H not is true. The H not. And there's two decisions that we can make. We can we can uh, reject H not or fail to reject H not. If I reject H not when it's true, that's a type one error. That's bad, right? And, the, and how do we protect that is, is by picking the right value for alpha. In the cases of medis, medical research, we make alpha as small as possible so that we're not going to end up in the tail unless it's really unless the data is really bad. Okay. If I fail to reject when it's true, that's okay. That's what we're looking for, right? Mm -hmm. No problem. If I reject it and it's false, that's okay also. No problem. If I fail to reject it as false, then that's a type two error. And this is, uh, we're not gonna study what this is. We just wanna know what kind of error it is. There's, there's yet to be more advanced in statistics to figure that out. It's, it's so, well, come on, Jeffy, go do it. Don't do it. Man. <laughs> But, but they, we can we can we can word them by just looking at the uh, is it on here? Well, let's just reason it out. The proportion of people who write with their left hand is equal to 0 0.29. Which of the following is a type one error? Type one is reject when it's true. So it would have to be C or D. Because A and B say fail to reject. So 
I would reject it when it's actually true. And that's it. Because if I reject it and it's false, so you can eliminate two of them right off the bat and then figure out from, if you want to copy that. And then they're going to ask us, what's the type 2 error? Well, a type 2 error has to be failed to reject. So it has to be either A or C. It can't be the other one because it's a fail to reject. You fail to reject when it's false. So this one. You fail to reject it when it's actually different. So it'd be C. See, that's how you work these out. You can eliminate half, half, two out of the four of them, and then just figure out which one has the right wording. Right? So I know it's failed to reject when it's false or not true. So then I just looked over here and failed to reject. This one said when it's actually, that means it's actually true. And this one says when it's actually different, which means it's false. So I know it's false. So you just reason it out. But the main thing to remember is we control we can control rejecting it when it's true with alpha. And that's why alpha is so important. You've got to pick the right, pick the right uh, number for the whatever you're dealing with. Like if I'm dealing with used tires, it's not going to be one percent, it's going to be probably ten percent. It's not that important. So you don't want to waste your time mm -hmm. in, that, in that particular manufacturing process. If it's uh, refining some medicine or some metal or something like that, now you, you, now you, want to, you know, you're know, you dealing with semiconductors or something, you know, fine machine work, you want to, you got your tolerance is much higher, so you, your error is much lower possibility. All right, so let's make a little recap. Couple of review questions here. And we'll move on. A blank is a procedure for testing a claim about a property of a population. What are we talking about? Yep, that's what we've been talking about. I'm just making sure. I don't know, like, I feel like a hypothesis for something else or a better side of reason. The blank hypothesis is a statement of the value of a population parameter is equal to some claim. Is that the only one? The uh, number three, the, the blank is a value used in making a decision about the null hypothesis and is found. It's found by converting the sample statistic to a score with the assumption that the null hypothesis is true. Okay. What's that? It'll be the first option. You see, think so? Yeah. Okay. You asked me if I thought that I was going to continue. Which of the following is not true about t values? Well, we know that the third one's true. It's the we know that one. it's an area because it's a probability. First one. No, that was that was that was actually the opposite of this one. Ah. If it's high, the null will fly. The p value separates the critical region from the values of the bunch of belonging. The p value doesn't do anything except. It's it's a, it's an amount of area. Mm. It's a probability. Remember, probabilities are areas. That's how in a continuous that, uh, uh, variable. That's how that we characterize. So it's just a that's that's the hard thing. Okay. Uh, and the last one. Which of the following is not true about the tails in the distribution? First one's true. I, you, you've probably never seen that, but that could mean not equal. Um, I already did count that one because that one stopped a whole lot. Yeah. Uh, the tails of the distribution are the extreme critical regions bounded by the critical value. Right. The inequality symbol in the alternative points away from the critical regions. No, because uh, it points towards it points towards them. Mm -hmm. So that's the one that's wrong. And the last one was the critical region in a left tail test is the extreme left tail. That's what's nice about them. They, they point, you see the points left, so you know right away you're on the right track. Okay. All right, so that's 8 1, uh, 8 2.
So we're, we're going to do some more with proportions here. 827 is where we'll start. Uh, I thought we were going to do something with, with the stack crunch right away, but see, this is a readout. It's like a stack crunch readout. First thing I notice is the P value. Yeah? So is it a left tail, right tail, or two tail? See, that's what it tells you. See, it doesn't say H0 and H1, it just says test up. As soon as you see the equals, you know that's H0. So that's P tail. Very good. Now we're going off the P value. What is the test statistic? Which one of those is the test statistic? It's going to be uh, the pointing. It's the Z, Z value. That's right. They call it here, they call it Z. This is a readout from who knows where. Every stat thinks that P value is. Zero. It says round to three decimal places. That's zero is close enough for me, and it'll take it. And what's the null hypothesis? The null hypothesis. Which one is it? A, B, C, or D? No, B, C. No hypothesis. C. It's always equals. Always. And what is? And what can you say about it? Do we do we do we get reject it or fail to reject? Fail to reject. Fail to reject. No. Fail. Oh. Do we reject it? Is this less than this? Yeah. Then P is low. The null must go. So we reject. Oh. So it's either A or D. Okay. Because the P value is less than or equal to the alpha. Oh. There's the alpha. They didn't say it was alpha. They said it was, they call it the significance level. That's just what it is, alpha. Mm -hmm. So there's alpha. There's P. P is less than alpha. So it would be reject. Because it's less than or equal. Question? All right, we we'll get we we'll get at the hang of it. So what's the final conclusion? See, once again, rather than get lost, I just go: is equality in, involved in the claim? Yeah. Where was the claim? In the test of e equals point nine two. The claim is that it's, yeah. The claim is that. 90% on itself, so it's, it's, it's an equality. So, yes. And do we reject? Yes. So it's the top one. There is sufficient evidence to warrant rejection of the claim. So it's B. Good. <laughs> okay. Next question. Ken. They do this a lot. You'll see this a lot. So I'll ask you. Uh, you can eliminate, which one can you eliminate? You can eliminate B because there's not an equal here. So it's got to be. And you see you have the three alternatives for the H1. So this is just a distraction. Don't ever pick something that doesn't have equals in the, in the null. Okay, so the claim is that 3% of the users develop nausea. D. Yeah, because the claim goes in, claim has equality. Okay, so identify the test statistic for this hypothesis. Test. So um, we're not going to calculate it, we're going to let the computer calculate it. So open stack crunch. This is a proportion. So I go to stack, proportions, one sample with seven. Stat, proportion, one sample, and some. The number of successes is 165. Notice that the ones that developed adverse reactions are the successes. This is statistical success. 5873, and this was 0.03, and it's two tail. So it's all set, right? Compute. So the test statistic is minus 0.86. It's not huge, right? 
the P value tells you we're not going to reject. Three decimal places, three nine two. So that's much bigger than one percent. We're at thirty nine percent. We're the P value is definitely not low. So we're failed to reject. Does is it, was equality in, in the null or in the plane? Yes. Did we did we reject? No, we failed to reject. So there's not sufficient evidence to warrant rejection of the plane. So it's weak. So you always fail to reject the null. That's the, that's the, you never really say you supported it by failing to reject it. You just say you, there's not enough evidence to reject it. Does nausea appear to be a problematic adverse reaction? Since the rate of nausea appears to be relatively high, it is not problem. Let's see what it's if it's low. Yeah. All right. Not a big problem. Uh, Thirteen. 206 subjects are treated with a drug that's used to treat pain, and 52 of them develop nausea. Use, use a 0 0.01 significance level of test pain, but more than 20% of the users develop nausea. So all I got to do here is go options, edit, and I can put in 53 here and down here 206. And then this number becomes 20%, so 0.20. And the claim is that more than, so it's it's a right tail test. Okay. And continue. Oop. It's, it was a right tail. There we go. I forgot to answer the first one. Test statistic 2.06. Now, we're almost, we're at 2% if you round it off to three decimal places. So it's, it's 0 0.020 for three decimal places. So are we going to reject? No. No, because it's greater than 1%. So fail to reject. So once again, if you get lost, there's insufficient evidence to warrant rejection of the claim or to support the claim. So let's let's follow along on this so we don't get lost. So equality was not, so it's, you drop down because it was a it was a right tail claim. So do you reject? No. So there's not sufficient evidence to support the claim. There's not sufficient evidence to support the claim. Now while we're at it, let me show you something here. Let's see if it works. I'm going to, what I'm going to do here is just change this to a confidence interval since uh, since it was 1% uh, significance level. Now check out what I got to do. It's once percent in the in the right tail, right? Mm -hmm. So to make it a confidence interval, I got to make it 98%. You understand that? Yeah. I got to balance it for, for if I'm going to use a confidence interval test. Does the does the confidence interval contain 20%? Uh, yeah. So that's why we don't reject. 2.20. So that's how you would use the confidence interval to, to sustain not supporting the claim. All right? Now, this is for a proportion. Like I said, it doesn't always work. So you've you got to be very careful with it. Okay? Uh, number. In a study of cell phone usage and brain hemispheric dominance, an internet survey was emailed to 6,000. I'll go ahead and start editing. Uh, so that's the number of observations, 6973. And there were 1,316 returns. Uh, use alpha at 1% level to 
test the plane at the rates less than 20 percent. So that's a left tail test at 20 percent. It's the same number we just used, so that's, that's pretty cool. So that would be number F. So you can which ones can you eliminate? B, D, and C. Because they don't have equals. So it has to be A, E, or F. And so it's a left tail to the question. All right, and the test statistics. So I do compute 2.3 minus 2.38. P value is low, isn't it? Less than 1%. So we're going to reject. P value is 0 0.009, which is less than 0 0.01. Barely, but because the P value is less than the significance level, reject the null hypothesis, there is sufficient evidence to support the claim that the rate is less than 20%. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. All right. So okay, that matches. Now what I'm going to do is go back here and let's see what happens, just, just for sake of curiosity. Now since it's 1% and it's left tail, we leave it at 98. It's still the same idea as before. And now it's 20% in the, in the confidence in that. No, that's why we reject. See how it fits together? But look, it's pretty damn close, isn't it? Right on the top. Really close. But you still, but you still saw that that was true of the p value, too, the p value. But see, that's what they said at 1%. And we still ended up in the tail. That's why we're significant. And that's it's not a it's not a small sample. It's pretty big. So you can't fault them for trying to you know make use of bad data. A random sample of 876 births included 433 points. Use a 10% significance level to test the claim that 50.5% of newborn babies are born. Okay, so uh, 433 is the number of successes. Uh, there was 876 births, that's the number of observations. And the, the, it, it's equals, right? 50.5. So. And it's not equal to the detail. But the claim is is in the null. Right. So it'd be e. mm -hmm. Okay, compute minus 0.63. And look at the P, P value is huge. 0 0.05, 0 0.526. We failed to reject. And we just say there's not sufficient evidence to warrant rejection of the claim. Yeah. We need to go through the, this one was easy. And lastly, do the results support the belief? It should be C because you can't you can't support it. You can't you just can say that we can't we can't unsupport it. Um, oh boy. Not following what you want to try to Okay, it's a the results do not support the belief. It really shows there's not strong evidence against it. I didn't. I just glanced, I glanced over. Yeah, yeah. See, but that's the important thing: is there is not strong evidence against it. You can't reject. You, you, there's not sufficient evidence to reject. Sorry about that. All right. I thought we could sneak one in there where we supported the. Uh, all right. An online poll asked, "Do you believe in the Loch Ness monster as real?" So this is once again a pretty big uh, number, 
21,652. And there was 61% said yes. So what I'll do is I'll do 0.61 times uh, 21,652. And the uh, claim is what? The claim is that most people believe. Yeah. So the claim is, and the alternative is greater than 50. 50%. If most people believe it, and it's greater than 50%. Right. So that'll be D. All right. And I have all the numbers in there. They want the test statistics. 32.37. So what do you think? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Look at the p value zero. So. It says zero, 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 one. If I that's a zero, so they allow you to do that. Okay, so you know how to answer it? We're rejecting, so it's either B or C. We're, we're, we're uh, supporting the claim. Yeah. Okay. And if you follow through on on the cheat sheet, did, was zero contained? No. Did you reject? Yes. So their sample data supports the claim. So that's what you How is the conclusion affected by the fact that the internet users who saw the question could decide what to respond? The best answer is probably B. Because it's a voluntary response. It could be valid. But you can't you can't go to you can't go to court on it. I don't know, they've been to um, court on that. Probably right. Uh, okay, so now we're gonna go to means. Means testing. Okay. Eight, three, two, okay. Degrees of freedom question. I guess hammer it home one more time. 23 different video games showing alcohol use were observed. The duration times of the alcohol use in seconds were recorded. When using the sample for a t-test of the claim that the population mean is greater than 89 seconds, what does DF mean and what is its value? See the number of degrees of freedom I gave it away. And so what is it? Degrees of freedom? How much? Do you remember what it is? So minus one. Minus, so what would it be? 88. 88. Is that what you said? I, I wasn't sure if it was the 23. I was rereading it. It might be the 22. Oh, I it looked at the wrong number. Yes. I'm sorry. Well, 22. Right there, yeah. Yeah, it, yeah. I just saw 89. Yeah. 23 is written out, so we all kind of like lost track of it. Okay, so if n is 23, so n minus 1 is 23. All right, so let's let's do this one again. Let's do it again. 22 different, so it's the number of degrees of freedom, so this one would be 21. Okay, so we got it right. Number four. Twelve different video games showing violence were observed. The duration times were recorded. Assume that these data are used with a 10% significant level to test the claim that the population mean is greater than 75 seconds. So the confidence interval should be no. It's two-tailed, and they're putting it. It's a right. It's a right-tailed test. They're putting 10% in the right tail. To balance it off, you got to put 10% on the left, so it's an 80% confidence interval. Remember that. They try to trick you with yeah, that. You see that? Because mm -hmm. confidence intervals always have to be balanced. Right. So if you have a one tailed test, you got to put another balance in, just for the sake of calling it a confidence interval. Okay. What do we conclude about the claim? Okay, so for this one, we'll watch. I do open and stat crunch. It's means, so I do data, or I'm sorry, stat, t stat, because there's no mention of uh, 
Oh. Well, let me go. Through. I'll finish what I'm doing here. So it's uh, T stat. One sample with data. All right, so variable ones with data and mu uh, 75 is mu naught and it's right tail greater than. Oh, confused. I, I picked the wrong one, didn't I? Yeah, I think it's y is zero. So stat, t stat, one sample with data. Variable one. Uh, see, the only difference is it's, it's going to use, there's no, there was no sigma. Mm -hmm. I, it would have used, it would have used S anyway. And it's right tail, it's greater than, seven sigma one, it's greater than. Greater than seven five seven. Okay, let's see what happens here. Let's see if we got the same numbers they got. They cl they claim that the confidence interval is 20.3. Well, we didn't we didn't create a confidence interval. But anyway, see the p value. We're not going to reject anyway. Let's. I, I I forgot. It's a confidence interval, and it's 80 percent. Let's see if we got the same numbers. We got different numbers than they do. I'm not sure why they got different numbers than we do. Let's see. Let's let me see something here. I think they might have done it wrong. Let's see. If, let me see if that's right. Yeah. See, they they actually have a 90% confidence in it. Okay. Well, I mean, when that. See, I said 80%. They agreed with me, but they they, they actually use a 90% to calculate their their confidence in it. Mm -hmm. See? Now, hypothetically, let's just follow their, their example. It says, if that was the confidence interval that you found, then what would you conclude? Well, the given confidence interval contains 75, right. so there's not sufficient evidence to, to support the claim that it's greater than 75. Right. But I think even if we would have used 80, Correctly, like we did, it still contains 75. So I'm not sure what they did here. But they really, they really, by me checking to make sure that they got the right numbers, I found out that they did. They asked us what size, and then they didn't use it. Because you see, for 80%, you don't get those numbers. Uh, sometimes, you, you know, you, you go with what you got. Uh, unfortunately, I have to sit down and argue with them. All right, so let's, let's go. Now, what you want to explain to my video? No, no. Use technology to find the p-value for the hypothesis test below. The claim is that smartphone carries, okay, so for this one, I can close that, and I can use uh, t-stat one sample with summary. So the sample mean is uh, okay. All they give us here is a test statistic. I, I'm I'm failing to read the problems correctly. I'm just trying to be too fast. Okay. They give us the mean and they give us the sample size and the test statistic. They want the p value. Well, that's the area to the left of the test statistic. So it's a p. And they give us n, so what I got I go to go to stat, uh, calculator t. First thing I do is put in degrees of freedom. That's 23, and I want. I know it says x there, but it should be t. I want t to be less than 1.475. I want what's in the right tail, uh, left tail. So 0 0.0. They're not telling me whether it's a uh, one-tailed or two-tailed test. Oh, it's two-tailed because that, that's the claim. See? Okay. So it's two-tailed. So I have to double that number. So, so see, watch. If I put in 0 0.077, so 
for a deeper to be clean up. I got a, I got a double that. I got a put in. What if you did the clean on the top of it? Would that give you the proper number? No. Okay. No. Well, it would give me the complement of it. I'll show you. Okay. I'll, I'll show you. Give me a second. I'll show you. Zero point zero seven six eight eight five. I, I'm using all these decimal places so I round off correctly. So that'll be point one one five four. So it would have it would have rounded off the same way. So zero point one five four. Right, so you know that's gonna be correct. Because it's two tail. T value has to be two tail. Uh, we just looked at the left tail, so we got it. All right, so to answer your question, in here. I would have to done this. I would have to do between minus 1.475 and 1.475. And then I would have subtracted that. I would have got 1, 5, 4. Remember the nut rule of 9? Mm, okay. See it? Yeah. Because what it's telling me is what's in the red, and I want what's in the white. So yeah. you have to remember that. Because you can't do both white, you can't do both tails at the same time. Okay. We did one of them and we doubled it. That's okay. the best you can do. Yeah. If you want the number at once, then you can do it this way, but you got to put both of them. But the, all, the opposites, whatever number we had, we had to do the opposite. Mm -hmm. They gave us the one negative one, we had to put the positive one, so we did both tails. Okay. All right? Make sense? All right, that was five. Let's do nine. The speed display provided some technology available results from using data for smartphone shared with data speeds at airports. The test that claim that they are from a population having a mean less than five. So right away, I know that's B. But the claim has to go into the alternative right. because it's left tail. Okay, so let's check that answer. And I close that, and uh, identify the test statistics. So I go to stat, T stat, one sample with summary. So the sample mean they give me is, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't even, they gave me the readout. There it is. So which one's the test statistic? Uh, minus. Yeah. 2.46. Uh, the problem went rounding. I severely hate rounding. P value, yeah. three decimal places. P value is 0.08. Nine. Nine. I don't like it one bit. Okay, so what's the final conclusion? Did they give us the alpha? It said alpha uh, is 5%. Significance five percent, but we're much less than five percent. We're less than one percent. Mm -hmm. So we're going to reject. There is the support the claim. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nice easy one, huh? As long as it's not like thirteen. A data set includes data from student evaluations of courses. The summary stats are, let's see, now I can do this, 94. X bar, that's the mean, 3.57. S, see, there's no mention of sigma anywhere. It's always that. Now, the, the, the uh, null mu naught is 3.75, and it says it's equal. So it's a setup for not equal, that's fine. So it's good, right? right. So it's going to be B. Right. Compute minus 3.36. See, the P value is really low. Zero, zero, 001. So reject. Once again, alpha is 5%. Mm -hmm. 
So reject. There's, suffi there's not sufficient evidence to conclude that the mean of the population courses is, is correct. Because that was the claim that I see. Oh, what did I do wrong? All of them are wrong. Let's see what let's see what I did wrong. Okay, does the original claim contain equality? Yes. Do we reject? Yes. yes. So there is sufficient evidence to warrant rejection of the claim. Well, so the, there is sufficient evidence. So we yeah. So you don't think that it would exceed um oh is not correct. There is sufficient evidence to warrant rejection of the claim. That means that the original claim is not correct. Uh, I, I'm sorry. I don't know why I'm so worried about it. I'm just nervous. Okay, 15. Let's see if I can do better. In a test of the effectiveness of garlic for lowering cholesterol, once again, I can just go ahead and change these as we go. So 36 is the sample size. They were treated with raw garlic. The changes before minus after in their levels has a mean of 0 0.3 and a standard deviation of 23.7. Using a 10% significance level, test the claim that the mean in the cholesterol is greater than 0 0.1. So that's greater than 0.1. Or greater than 0. Excuse me. I just saw that zero point. I don't know why. Yeah. Why would it be point or why would it be zero? It says because it says greater than zero. Oh. Um, okay. I was still on point one. Yeah, I was too, I guess. I don't know what. I saw the point and I just assumed it was a point one also. Okay, so that's it. So uh you can see this is it, it's C. Right tail test. Okay, and then determine the test statistic. Point zero eight. You see the p value is really high. Mm -hmm. Four seven zero. And that means we're not going to reject. We fail to reject. So there's not sufficient evidence to conclude that the mean of the population changes is greater than zero. All right, so before I go on to the next question, I'm going to do this. We haven't done this for a while. I'll do the confidence interval. And since it was 10%, uh, two, two tails. Right. You see zeros in there. Right. But it said it was greater than zero. Right. So that's why we can't reject. But I mean, if the upper limit goes up to five, and it's still greater than, I said the upper limit goes up. I know. But there's no conclusive, there's possibility, but it's not conclusive. Uh, there's also a possibility that it remains negative. Okay. So it's just, it bounces around based on, on this. On this uh, sample, which we don't see, unfortunately. Okay. Just a couple more. Here. The data looks that list earthquake depths, the summary statistics. Okay. So once again, there's no mention of sigma, so it's it's a T. So I can just go ahead and edit this. So there's 600 earthquakes. The mean is 5.67. And S is 4.17. And the claim, alpha equals 1%, is that earthquakes are from a population with a mean equal to 5. So the claim is, the claim is in the null, so it's a two-tailed test. So it'll be B. Determine the test statistic. 3.94. You see the p value is really low. 
zero, so we're going to reject. So just so we don't get confused, zero is contained in the original plane. And do we reject? Yes. So there is sufficient evidence to warrant rejection of the plane. So there is sufficient evidence to conclude that the mean of the population is not correct. I don't know why I don't follow that. It works every time. Uh, 21. So some raw data again, so I can go ahead and open this up. Well, first of all, let's just, I, I can open it up. What the heck? As we go, we can fill it in. So I, ooh, I'm losing my time. I look for anything about sigma, and it doesn't have sigma, so it's going to be a T. So I, oops, I did it wrong. I should have opened this instead. There we go. So, uh, you stat one sample with data. The data is variable one, and the claim is that all such medicines, that the mean lead level for all such medicines is less than 18. So it's less than 18. So it's a left tail test. Mm -hmm. So that'll be C. Determine the test statistic, minus 2.33. And they're using 10% for alpha. And look at T. T is 2. Point. Well, they give us the P value as 0 0.0222. Let me see if they would accept that. Yeah, close enough. I didn't feel like changing. All right. So since that's less than 10%, we reject. Okay, so uh, there's no. No is the answer to, is, is the original claim contain equality? No. Did we reject? Yes. So the sample data supports the claim. There is sufficient evidence to conclude that the mean is less than we're supporting the claim. Now, let's go over here and show you that why that's true. Because if I take a 80% uh, confidence interval, because it's, it's a because it's two tail it's left tail so it's got to be balanced. You'll see that uh, 18 is not in there. So we have sufficient evidence to show that it's less than 18. That's using the confidence. All right, that was 21. One more, 25. Use the pulse rates and beats per minute. Okay, so once again, we open it up as a data set and stat set. Don't need that. And it'll be, there's no point, there's nothing about sigma, so once again, it's a T, one sample with data, and the data is pulse rates. And the claim is that the mean is less than 80, so it's a left tail less than 80. And it's 5% on the alpha level. So you can see that, oh, I forgot to put the right one there. To see. All right. So the test statistics minus 2.80. And the p-value is 0 0.004. So we are less than 5%. So we're going to reject the null. And since we're on the bottom once, the zero wasn't in there, and we're rejecting, so the sample data supports the claim. So there is sufficient evidence to conclude that the mean is less than. That was the claim. And so if we go to 
once again, I like to do this with the confidence interval. This is now a 90 because it was 5% in the left tail. You can see that 80 is not in there. It's got support that's less than 80. Support. Now, when you have means, it always works. They're all, it, whatever the hypothesis test tells you, the confidence interval will agree. So if you get like unsure, you can just change it over to a line. Yeah, but this just make sure that you have the balanced confidence interval to, to match the uh, testing that you're doing. Okay, any questions? No? Guess what? That's it. All right, don't leave yet. Yeah, I want you to, I want you, well, let's, before you do that, is it okay if we meet tomorrow and Thursday online so you don't have to travel? Yeah. Yeah. If this was eight people or ten people, then I'd say no. But two people, and you guys are both up to date on all your assignments except for two problems. And num homework number nine is not due until when? Uh, Wednesday. 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 Yeah. And you can turn it in all the way till Friday, but it's due Wednesday. And if test number oh, test number three opens up on Wednesday. Yep, it opens up in staff, staff lab on Wednesday. And so you can you can do it twice before Sunday. Also, the post test opens up on Wednesday in my staff lab. And that you have to finish by Sunday also. So you got three things to do. Homework nine, test three, and the post test. And you have till Sunday night, midnight to do them, but you know, if you want to enjoy your weekend. There's people that do it, believe me. There's people that I, I do it. I know they do because I've been that guy. <laughs> I've been here. It doesn't no skin off my back. Because I, I don't, I will, Monday mornings when I do all the, unless you got everything done, then I'll put your grade up. Yeah. Now, also, <clears throat> you do have a chance to do some test one and two over again. Okay. If you want to, you just Absolutely. text me and say, I want to do them. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah. But, has to be before Saturday midnight. Okay. All right. Yeah. For those two. Okay. All right. So you guys know about the monthlies, right? Right. You know about monthlies? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 The survey. The survey. Yeah. Okay. You know where it is? Let's do it on the desktop then. I'm not supposed to be here for it, so. But, you know, uh, if you got things to tell me about, that's cool. <laughs> My boss is always like to hear nice things, also. A lot of people are always surprised at how much they learned or the different things. Yeah. Why did I learn this in high school? Stuff like that. But, I think that was the teacher prior class to high school. I know. Because that's actual like adult things you need to know. I agree. That's what I agree. All right, so I gotta shut this down.